you think the Port Charles Naked Eyes book took a bite out of your afternoon, wait until you see the next fantastic chapter in this supernatural soap. <laughs> Did I just say fantastic? ABC's Port Charles is taking a bite out of the network's daytime lineup. I will not allow it. For one day only, One Life to Live will give up its one hour time slot when Port Charles debuts its 10th book, Surrender. I think that it's really awesome that we get a chance to, to do this and that, you know, Brian Franz is really behind our show. It's a great episode, and I think that there's going to be a lot of different shock factors, but we were really pleased with it, and I think fans will just drop their jaw. <laughs> Viewers really got sucked in during the summer of 2001 when Michael Easton appeared as sexy vampire Caleb in Tainted Love. We are one everlasting. The vampire story continued into PC's next arc, Tempted. Are you, like, from heaven? Despite the lurking evil, there was an unexpected romance between Angelic Wraith and town good girl, Allison Barrington. You're an angel. One of the things that fans of this couple liked was that there was this quirky character that fell out of the sky that this girl kind of dug. Tempted also spelled the demise of Kayla. No more! Or so we thought. Because man, he doesn't know he says he is. By PC's ninth book, Naked Eyes, Michael Easton returned as part of the Stephen Clay experience. Did you just call me a vampire? A vampire? Naked Eyes created an opportunity for daytime vet Ian Buchanan to join the PC cast as the mysterious band manager, Joshua. I wanted to coax out of you everything you know about Stephen. And then I was thinking of... As the story progressed, viewers found out that Stephen was really Caleb, opening new wounds for Allison's mom, Elizabeth. The coolest thing about this whole vampire thing is to still try to approach it realistically. So how would you really feel? So as Naked Eyes ends and Surrender begins, what can fans expect? Our special is going to be really neat. Definitely some surprises. And what about Port Charles' daytime darlings, Rafe and Allison? You can look forward to some roller coaster rides, I guess. Oh my God. They have an obstacle to deal with, and it's something that they have to deal with together. ABC is hoping that whether or not you're a diehard fan or a first time viewer of the Supernatural Soap, that you'll surrender yourself to Port Charles for one hour. You sure you still want to go on? And I want to do this thing till dawn. ABC's Port Charles, she plays Marissa, a professional reporter who sees the world in black and white. Ricky, what are you doing with my stuff? In real life, Joy Bisco sees the world in living color. Coming at you! Wow! <laughs> yep, Joy's the name, and paintball's her game. We're at New Max Army and Navy Paintball Shop. OK, that's a mouthful. That is. What is the connection with you in this store? This is my store. Joy and her boyfriend blasted their way into the paintball business in 1999. They started small, but now these two hot shots have an entire arsenal. It actually started with nine guns on the wall. And as you can see, there is a plethora oh, yeah. of guns. A menagerie of guns. <laughs> and then we also catered to the Army Navy surplus people. While the store is an ongoing project, Joy's love for the sport is solid. So where did her joy for paintball start? My boyfriend Arnold is a professional paintball player. I love it. It's just part of my life. It's, you know, just as much as Joy is into acting, you know, I love oh. paintball. An opportunity came by where he knew someone who was selling his store, and we, we bought it, and uh, we just kind of turned it into this. So I guess I got kind of like pulled in, but I'm glad I did. Since I didn't know a thing about paintball, Joy let me in on the secrets of the sport. Well, these are paintball guns, and it's basically from this end of the wall to like about yay around here. It's all recreational, and price-wise, it starts from $99 all the way up until around $250. So for someone just starting, this is yeah, a good portion of the Yeah, this is very ideal. This okay. is very ideal. Between the gun, the paintballs, and extra gear, this sport can cost some big bucks. The case of paint will range anywhere from 50 to sometimes 90 dollars 
for one for of these? For 2000 no, no, that's Oh, 100. okay, that's like, this, this is, is probably probably $4. $4. Okay. And it doesn't end there. You've also got to wear the right stuff. Whatever makes you feel comfortable, go out and play in it. I mean, Wait a minute, know. wait a minute. I got to go back to this because <laughs> I'm feeling it. I'm going paintball 220 miles per square inch or something. <laughs> this isn't very thick. It's going to hurt when the paintball hits you. People kind of shy away from it because they think it's going to really hurt. Yeah. But it does. It's just like a little thing. It's like a sting. Oh, ow. But hold your fire. Let's take aim at Arnold, who agreed to be my target. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry I got off. I didn't mean to do it. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Then, oops, I did it again. <laughs> I'm dying. Yeah. I'm dying. Yeah. Arnold was bruised, but like a real paintball warrior, he's never bothered by being blasted. When all the adrenaline's going and everything, you don't really feel a thing, you know? Goggles on. OK, I think I've got it. Time for a moving target. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. You got it, I'm girl. good. Yeah, no. I'm going to be on a paintball team because I've got you, baby. Yeah. OK, big guy, how about one last shot? I think I'm addicted. Oh, oh yeah. Where's my $1,200 gun? As you can see, by the end of the day, I was totally hooked. Oh. I'm going to be on a paintball team. That's you guys, so team. Yeah, so team. That is so much fun. What if I become, like, super psycho addicted? Yeah. Then you go to New Max, Army Navy, paintball, 20655, so we're back any road. We're totally going. Thank you so much for letting me shoot you. Bye. You might call him one of daytime's most well-rounded guys, a former college quarterback who runs, bikes, golfs, works with kids, and even plays guitar. But Brian Presley's biggest thrill is being on the set of Poor Charles, doing what he loves best. Poor Charles Jack Ramsey is hip, hot, wild. Plus, he's got a smile to die for. In real life, Brian Presley is a Midwestern boy who made good in Hollywood and got the girl, too. Brian and I got married. If I got to be at work all day, I'd rather be there with my wife. Before he married his cutie co-star, Aaron Hershey, this Jinx Oklahoma native had to get the part. I haven't seen you before, have I? Nope. No, it's exciting. I love coming to work. You know, I work with great people. I have an awesome job. I no complaint. Soon after being cast, Brian was sprouting fangs in one of PC's most popular story arcs. You don't know who you're dealing with or what I can do. My favorite story was Tame Love. When Jack was a vampire, he had to do all those cool stunts. Brian's ability to take a bite out of Tainted Love earned him an Emmy nod. Award shows are great now, but it doesn't define anything. It doesn't define a person, and you know, you take them for what they're worth. Winner or not, Brian definitely earns his keep. We're pretty much getting up at 5.30 every morning, and you get home around 6.30, 7 at night, and then you learn two more shows for the next day. Despite the grueling hours, Brian and the rest of the PC cast know the meaning of brotherhood. We have a really like, small cast, and so we're, we're all pretty close. And we have, uh, I would say, you know, Torsten Kay has been, uh, we've become really good friends. And, and Nolan uh, plays my brother on the show, and we become really good friends. And they're a little older than I am, and they probably want me to say that, but they are. <laughs> Besides working with his beautiful wife and his friends, it's the fans who keep Brian blazing. Go, Brian! It's amazing how committed uh, fans stay to the show and, and, and to their characters. When we get a chance to go say thanks and thanks for supporting us and watching us, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of what it's all about. Rockets loaded with canisters of diamond dust are hurtling toward Fort Charles. Whether or not they're villains from the past <laughs> or rogues from the present. Don't you get it? ABC has always provided its daytime viewers with the best of the baddies. This could be very interesting. What's so good about being so bad? Whatever it is, fans can't seem to get enough. <laughs> One thing is for sure, there are two types of villains. The ones you love to hate. I know why you're making fun of me. Because I've made promises to you that I haven't kept. And the ones you just can't stand. You, me, and a pair of scissors. Mm. 
So what separates the fun-loving bad boys from the downright dirty scoundrels? <laughs> Usually it's their dastardly deeds against women. You stay where you are, I'll break her neck right now. Probably one of ABC's most treacherous villains was GH's Stavros Cassidyne. Back. No, I never left. A role originated by John Marchnuzzi in 1983. A Cassidyne never gives up what is his. So what made him so evilicious? His obsession with Laura. Watch. You watch Kathy Mr. Spencer. After taking a tumble down a flight of stairs, Stavros broke his neck and died at General Hospital. Or so he thought. <laughs> <laughs> when Robert Kelker Kelly resurrected the character in 2001, Stavros was met with a chilly reception. Who are you? Stavros. Castor. Surprise. <laughs> it wasn't long after his return that Stavros bid farewell to poor Charles one more time. Say goodnight, Crazy! <laughs> Oh, keep trying. Oh, oh, bye-bye. GH is also the home of one of ABC's most beloved mobsters, Sonny Corinthos, played by the dashing, dimple-faced Maurice Bernard. Sonny isn't the only dastardly dude to win over viewers. These guys also use their wicked wiles to woo the women. They're so beautiful. Love them or hate them. We're doing just fine. <laughs> You can always count on some manly meanies to make your day. <laughs> Somebody help us! On ABC's General Hospital, Elizabeth Weber is strong, sassy, and savvy, but unlucky in love. In real life, Rebecca Herbst is all of those things, except for one. She's surrounded by love, and lots of it. My parents have been married for 32 years, and they have always just taught me to be who I am, to go after what I want, and, and to never give up on my dreams. And that's exactly what the lovely young actress has done. In 1997, Becky was cast as the feisty Elizabeth Weber. Why are you making such a big deal out of this? Your safety is a very big deal to me. I was with Lucky. Two years later, fate intervened when former GH'er Michael Saucedo was cast in the role of Juan. Although their characters didn't cross paths much, that didn't stop the two from finding real love. Now the two are the proud parents of this little cutie, Ethan. Michael and I, we have a complete balance down at home. I've been fortunate enough to have a stay-at-home dad, and Michael stays home right now with a baby. There's nothing better for the child than to be home all day with a parent. For these new parents, it's just a short ride to grandmother's house, a spectacular home nestled in the hills of Southern California. This house is just special to me because I came here when I was 14, and I went through all my high school years here and made a lot of my friendships in this house. And just the fact that my parents are still here it's, it's home. And it's still home for other reasons as well. We do have a lot of animals. Thank goodness they all stayed home with my parents. We have about six rabbits and two squirrels. I actually have a dog at home. Her name is Sadie. Michael is a huge dog person. I am not. And he decided when I was pregnant that he wanted to get a dog. So he went to the pound, unbeknownst to me, and was searching for a dog. Found one took me there. I said, no, absolutely not. I don't want the dog. You don't like dogs. And we drove away, and I saw the look on his face, and I said, fine, turn around. And now I just love that dog. One, two, three. So how often do they visit? We come here um, probably just about every day. <laughs> Maybe, you know, five days a week. We're here a lot. My parents watch the baby a lot when we go out to eat, or, or even just going to the grocery store. It's so much easier not having a child with you. Being a mother has given Rebecca a newfound respect for her own mom. I've learned so much being a parent. I have a ton more respect for my mom, and I've always respected my mom. So now it just blows me away how she was able to do it with two children. I have learned so much patience from becoming a mother, and I've really learned how to balance my work and play and being a mom. 
taken a lot of work, but I've seemed to have figured out the formula. We're coming to you from the set of Port Charles, one of daytime's edgiest, youngest, and hippest shows. So what makes PC such a big hit with the fans? Just look between the lines, the storylines. If you're looking for a supernatural experience, then hitch a ride to ABC's Port Charles. In the fall of 2000, Port Charles began airing three-month story arcs called telenovelas. The concept of the short story arc was a way to provide an audience with an easy on-ramp that you don't have to watch for months and months to understand what's going on. Since their first book, Fate, the offbeat soap has traveled through time, taking a bite out of daytime TV. One of their most popular stories has been Tainted Love. I would say, I mean, my favorite story was Tainted Love. For sure, the vampire story. When Jack was a vampire and he got to do all this cool stuff. <laughs> I remember when Brian was doing that, we were just friends. <laughs> well, maybe not everyone agrees. You little guy. Daniel. There's no reason to cry. For Brian Gasco, miracles happened for him and his heavenly character, Wraith, during PC's fifth book. I think I really found the character in during Miracles Happen. I love starting off every episode writing in the journal. Whether or not it's vampires. You don't know who you're dealing with. Or angels. It seems PC's unique storytelling is catching on. The fans have really embraced the story arcs. It's a faster way of telling stories, and we get a real payoff with the stories much more quickly, and the audience becomes hooked on it, and they're willing to go on a journey. What also makes PC's books a hit are its catchy titles and theme songs. I thought Tainted Love was perfect for the Tainted Love chapter. I mean, I don't think they could have found another song more suiting. The music for Naked Eyes was written and produced specifically for the show's ninth story arc. Oh, it's all perfect. It's erotic, it's sensual, it's a journey of so many people. So what's ahead for ABC's breakout soap? Well, it depends on who you ask. You're going to see new characters, old characters, new characters intermingle, and I think it's just going to be, it's going to be lots of drama. You'll just have to tune in and watch, but I promise some really great stuff on Port Charles.